Okay, so we have our sketch. We've started to collect reference of different elements. I like to collect three to six uh, references for each major element because we don't always know how they'll fit together. So for the head, for the wings, for the talons, sometimes you're not able to find as much. It is very important that the reference is high enough resolution, right? So I suggested eight megapixels or bigger. And you should be able to zoom in on it and see it clearly. Now, a lot of animal reference, even though this is high resolution, this is what's called a, a lot of film grain. It has an ISO that's really forced high to get something moving fast and still have it be sharp. And we can forgive that to some extent, right? But you don't want all of your reference to be grainy. So it's good to have multiple solutions. Now this one's kind of artsy and nice, but it's a little out of, it's a little blurry and out of focus, right? But it's a high enough resolution. So you decide what your cutoff for quality is, as long as it's at least eight megapixels. But this one is great, except it's got a little bit of motion blur to it, right? So from all of these, I think I can make something work because we can always composite uh, sharper images onto it. So that's why you need multiple references for, for all the different components. How do we set up our sketch in Photoshop? So if you photograph your sketch, if it's in your regular sketchbook, you then want to make sure the image size is the, the end size that we want to print, which is around 11 by 14 by 350 pixels per inch. So you go to image size. And before you do that, you make sure that you've kind of cropped your image down so that it contains your sketch. Think of it like a sticker. You need to have it from head to toe, a t-shirt design, something you'd paint on the hood of your car. You don't want to have any part of it cropped off. But you don't, also don't want a lot of extra space around it. So now I can go to image size and I can see that this is basically eight by 10 inches by 300. I want to resample that. So the computer will grow pixels for me. And I want it to be around 14 inches wide. And this will make it a little bit over 11 inches tall for my purposes. And then I want the resolution to be 350. So this is the best of all worlds. The assignment sheet says it has to print at at least 8 by 10 and at least 300, right? This is a higher standard, but this is kind of our lab standard because this could also print at 16 by 20 at a good enough resolution. And we could print it at 8 by 10 and we could print it at 11 by 14 and anything in between. And <coughs> digital art, one of the great advantages it has over traditional art is its versatility of use, right? So we can make multiple prints if we can have resolution at this size. It grew it, it more than doubled it from, from 20 megabytes to around 56. And because of that, it's going to soften my, my sketch a little bit. It's basically growing pixels around every pixel that's there now, more than doubling the number of pixels. And if you're going from a screen grab photo, you are like quintupling the number of pixels, right? So it's going to get very blurry, but you'll still be able to see your sketch indication. And the most important thing is that the resolution is now the final resolution you'll need. So I'll show you how it blurred it out a little bit. What used to be really clean lines now have this kind of really blurry edge. But because I drew it in the computer, the computer has less problem um, extrapolating up pixels if it, they were computer created for the first place. So, so this is still very easy to read. Next thing I'm going to do is I am going to make a new layer. And I'm going to fill that with middle gray. Edit fill 100% normal mode, 50% gray. Now, this is going to be my background, my workspace. But in order to be able to use it that way, I have to unlock my background layer of my original sketch. 
just by clicking on the lock. And then I need to drag the, the gray fill layer underneath it. Okay, now I need to say image canvas size. And I'm going to grow that gray behind my sketch to roughly 30 by 40 inches, just like we did for the landscape. So because my sketch is wider than it is tall, I'll do 40 inches wide, 30 inches tall. And I will center it, it will grow from the center. I say okay. And then I'm going to fill that again because now we've grown it. So there's our original. And we've, we'll zoom out a little bit, we've created all this extra workspace for us. So I'm gonna fill that background layer with middle gray, the whole thing again. And now we're really starting to use our pixels. All right, so the analogy I like to use for doing a creature composite, this would be for any composited vehicle, for any composited weapon, for any composited um, figurative element, something that is meant to be seen moving on screen or in, a, in an animation. I use the analogy of assembling a car. So a car isn't built all by, by one person in one location, right? It's not like a Lego set. Instead, a car is built in big sections, and then those big sections are brought together onto what's called the chassis. Like the heaviest big part of the car is like the, the bolted undercarriage, and then everything gets bolted into that, the engine, the seats, and then the doors, and then the wheels, and then everything's polished at the end. So think of your sketch as your chassis. This is in the center of the factory floor, the center of the, of the assembly line. So we're gonna take your sketch and we're gonna to tone it down to about 50% opacity. And then around it, we're gonna to start to assemble your different component parts. So if you're a car maker, or a jet maker, or anything with a lot of complex things that need to move and work. Um, you have to have a supply chain. You have to order parts from different places and they're, they're varying qualities. So we want to assess the quality of our parts before we start assembling them. So I'm gonna assemble my head over in this area, in the upper left-hand corner. I'm gonna assemble, assemble my chest over in the upper right. And then we'll work from there. And then I'm gonna try to assemble the head onto the chest, and then I can put them on the chassis, and then I can build the tail, then I can build the wings, so on and so on. So that's why I've organized my references that are all eight megapixels or larger into these different folders. You always wanna start with your head. Even if it's not the biggest part of your creature, it is the focal point of your creature. Anything that's figurative, that's a character that moves, we look at the head first to see where they're moving, what the angle of their body is, what the, the momentum of their pose is. That's true of Pokemon, it's true of my sketch. And so when I was looking for reference, I had to find reference that had an angle similar to my sketch. And the very best one I found was this Komodo dragon. Which is perfect for kind of monster and creature design because it's a little unusual, right? So if I bring it in, I'm gonna place it you can see that its resolution is just a little bit bigger than I need it to be, which is perfect. But then I'm gonna move it off to the side. And then immediately, just like we did with landscape, I'm gonna rough cut it out. I can decide if I wanna keep that tongue or not, but let me, let me give myself the option. And I wanna give myself as much overlap as I can. Even though I just want the head, it's very helpful to have that shoulder joint in there to remind me how it's different than what I've designed. So once I've um, lassoed this on the smart object I brought in, I hit Command J to duplicate it. And then I can just go ahead and immediately delete the smart layer. Now, instead of, I actually will have auto select layer turned on so I can grab these references easily. Instead of immediately trying to match this to my sketch, like we did with the landscape, I'm gonna build it over here, but I'm gonna to start to transform it right away. So I, I know I need to tilt the neck. I might even try warping it a little bit. You see how my neck is kind of angled back like that. And the great thing about organic reference 
This isn't like a bridge, you know, that we can't bend. As long as we keep in mind what the skeleton's doing, we're making up our own creatures here, we have quite a bit of leeway in how we can distort it and play with it, especially if we build up other components. So I'm stretching that neck back, but I love that angle of the head. So I'm going to keep that. And if things are processing a little slowly, it's just because these are lots of pixels we're dealing with. And I'm going to go ahead and keep it a little bit larger than I need. I'm not going to shrink it right away, right? Because as soon as I shrink it, I can't get that pixel quality back. Okay, while that's transforming, I'm going to look at the other head references I have. Um, lots of nice profile shots, but the problem with the profile shots is they don't match the exact kind of three-quarter angle of my pose. So that's why I'm using this as my, my basis, but I can use these for textures, for colors, for something like a beak, ears, something else. So I really like the idea of using some of these textures from this chicken. So let's bring that in. Photoshop's taking a while. I'm going to quit other programs I don't need that are open right now. I can quit preview because I already have my sketch in here. All right. Just waiting for the processing. I can actually even quit my browsers because today is all about just working within Photoshop, bringing your reference into one file. Oh my gosh, warping that's taking a while. So when Photoshop takes this long, doing something fairly basic, like a transformation, then what I do is I save my work, and then I'm going to restart Photoshop, especially because I have other um, programs turned off now. Oh my gosh, what is it doing? That should help. Okay, so I'm going to go to File, Save, As, because now that I have more than one layer, it's not just my sketch anymore. This is my assignment. So I want to save it as Carl Assignment 2. I can describe it. Collaged creature, whatever you want to call it, as a Photoshop file to the desktop. Command D to navigate there. Did you say this is a problem with um, like not having enough RAM or not fast enough processor? Well, it's not. It's not a problem with the computer not having a fast enough processor. Or not have enough running memory or RAM. It's a problem when just a lot of that RAM is just being diversified across lots of things. And if Photoshop has been open while well, you have all these other things open, it's gotten used to pooling less memory. So by um, saving it and then closing it, it helps kind of clear the cache of all the, the other things I've had it remember and do, which helps it its internal memory run a little bit faster. And then by quitting it, it just kind of gives you a fresh start without other programs competing for its memory load. Now, if Photoshop never runs very quickly on your computer, then you need to question you know, the amount of RAM you have and the processing. But you see how now Photoshop's being a little difficult to, to save. <laughs> it's taking a little time. Oh, no. But I know it's saving because I have it on, on my desktop there. But it's saying 0%. So now it's kind of kickstarting. This is going to help. So I can quit Photoshop, restart it. Sometimes restarting the computer can help, but that's not generally necessary. But I want to make sure that Photoshop completely closes. So once it's saved, now I can say force quit if it's not closing naturally. Okay, finally it closed. Now I can open it. 